good people, ladies and germs. What's going on? It's Jerome Wilson here. <laughs> With episode 7 of Road to Phoenix documentary. I'm buying enough time until we make it to the very lovely film that everybody's been anticipating. I don't know why, but I, 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 I might get an Oscar for it. I, I have big, big dreams. I might just meet some famous actors in the United States of America and, you know, they might just shake my hand. I, I hope to at least reach that level, you know? One handshake is enough from a famous actor. I, I don't know. I'm just wishing too much. So, this is episode 7 and we're going to be talking about a very basic topic from this one. The mindset is a very tricky thing. Oh Shane, what is going on? This is O'Shane, a very good friend of mine. Why don't you give a brief introduction for yourself? And this time project your voice so that everybody can hear you. If you don't project your voice, it'll be one hit on the shoulder every time. That's good. All right. Good day, everyone. This is O'Shane Fraser. A little louder. <laughs> <coughs> can you all hear me? Okay, okay. All right, so this is O'Shane Fraser once again. And just want to say greeting to all. What minute to say again? I think a greetings to all of you. <laughs> you have a mindset for an idea and you want to go to a specific location to carry out this concept that you've thought of. But you see when you actually get to this location and you want to carry out your idea, you say to yourself, I give up right here and now. I'm not going to continue this anymore. I'll, I'll just stop right here. Your mindset has failed. God he knows what happened to you at that very moment. We're going to be discussing three pointers on what happens when you're at the very location but your mindset just collapses on you. O'Shane here has been a beneficial help and I have to give you thanks for that. At the very last minute he helped to get a location for me to shoot a very important scene which was the work scene. The work scene was in an office space that was very private and O'Shane recommended it to me and I have to thank you for that very much. You'll be handsomely rewarded in the future when I get rich, when I own, uh, let's see now, I, I think the Subaru or the Escalade is a very good car. You want an Escalade? Yeah. A five-story house? Mm, not really. He's not really desirable of a lot of things and he's a, you know, a shy talker, so I don't know. Maybe I'll get you a nice hot cocoa bread and pot, okay? There, you see, there that works. Go, go. <laughs> the first pointer, the stress, the stress, the stress, man. A lot of people get stressed easily. Now, I've seen a lot of dancers out there who have their dance groups. I've seen a lot of event coordinators. But in the middle of everything, the stress takes them and they just give up. They're saying that they can't do it anymore. The stress kicks in because a lot of problems at home or wherever they finally get to. For you now, when it comes to doing something that you like and then you get stressed, why do you think you give up at that very moment? So see, you help. guys know that I am happily married. Nobody knows this. Yes, I am. So congratulations, man. Thank you. That is actually good, but you know, typical wives, they <laughs> intend to take over. They want to be in control. They want to be the person that wears the pants mm -hmm. in the relationship or in the house. All right, so we're going to so. dial it back down to two right now, okay? Yeah. So to save him from this <laughs> unknown predicament, if his wife may be watching, <laughs> we will save him by saying vice versa. There are a lot of controlling husbands at home. So as you know, you set out to do your work, your event, your dance coordination, even a short film like this. But when you go home, you go home to a lot of problems. And these problems, take you over like a demon and you give up at home you're saying that you're not going to do it anymore i have one thing to tell all of you please don't do that i'm begging of you don't do it if you do this you're going to look five years into the future at somebody who had the same idea as you who came from nothing and did something and it worked if you're stressed at home deal with it i know that saying something like this is wishful thinking and it's biased but you're in control of your own life. If you want to go home to your problems, that's a choice that you have made. If you want to change it and make your life better, you have to think of something, even if it means you have to move out of your own house. Don't move out of your house, okay? That jumps to a second point right now. Why do you think I should get married? Because marriage is actually good. In you what You actually regard? have someone there to, you know, to comfort you, yes. Stress you out at the same time, but at least, so, so you have companionship. When you have a lot of 
wonderful people to help you out. You think that is a major contributor? It is, yes. I don't see myself it getting is. married. <laughs> I don't know why you think of me as a Please explain to me why you think this. Uh, most people in this kind of trade, they, they remain single. Like for example now, if I'm shooting a scene, which many people might be tuning into pretty soon in this film, <laughs> It is a very erotic scene. Now, I don't know how actors in Hollywood or in any film industry do it, but you're kissing on a woman. A woman's mm -hmm. kissing on you. Mm -hmm. How do you think a close companion feels about that when they're watching something like this? I mean, they sell their basic selves out to their role, and by contract, they have to do something like that. But this is unofficial. So, why do you think bonds with people would help in a trade like this? It's all about the communication. Alright, that's a good, that's a good, so that's a good statement. Once you are able to communicate properly, mm -hmm. then there should be no problem. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what kind of woman you think I'm going to be married to, but I know very well she won't be happy with that at all. She's going to give you the little Jeromes, the little Wilsons, <laughs> the little Sluggers. <laughs> I think we'll just jump to the third point. <laughs> the third point that we're getting to. Future problems are gonna kick in. Now, when you're bouncing back from nothing and you're doing something like this, it's like you have to be picking up the pieces every single minute and starting over, starting over, starting over. To the point where some people said it doesn't make any sense and they continue. Now, worrying every day is what people do. Even when I get up on a Monday morning, I don't want to go into work. True. Sometimes when you go into work, it's not all that bad, but it's that mindset that you have where you say, Oh man, I gotta go into work again. I really wish I could stay home today. Why can't rain just fall heavily? I guess based on the, the environment or the type of company that you have around, um, let's say like for elder persons, based on what they're saying or they're instructing you to do, so you're basically learning from them so if they put in negativity mm. then you're going to display negativity as well so if you surround yourself with people who give you positive remarks then you know what to do that exactly. way you won't worry about anything in the future exactly okay okay so you see all the locations are set and the planning is there all that all all people need to do is to surround themselves with positive minded people but here's something that people worry about right now that's the opportunists you know very well that when you finally reach a successful mark in whatever you're doing, you always have people who appear out of nowhere and then they try to ruin everything for you. Opportunists are literally the worst types of land sharks out there. They see where something good is going on for you, they ruin it. And you as a successful person, have to, you have to be worried about something like that. How do you know that majority of the people that you surround yourself with are positive thinkers like you? That's a tough question. Really. It's tough indeed, <laughs> but it's a, it's a very easy answer. You won't know. Everybody change well, they don't change, they show their true colors. And in the near future, if you've developed enough experience with your mindset and you become stronger in your mindset, you will see who's real from who's fake. <laughs> Whatever it is that people may do to you, and if you're worried about it in the future, just let the experience happen. I mean, all you can do is just pick yourself up from whatever this small failure you may experience in the future but for now you don't have to worry about the future just worry about the present don't have a negative mindset as Shane said surround yourself with positive minded people he's a positive minded fellow you know I actually respect him a lot but I worry about you a lot marriage must be tough you know? marriage is a biatch isn't it sometimes <laughs> I don't know man I, I don't see myself getting in that that, that, that kind of bond but mm. if you have hopes then we'll see Sorry, Wilson. man. Mrs. Wilson is going to be out there, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, you, you'll see whatever you want. I, I'm I saying it. <laughs> and I'd like to thank you for being a positive influence for this project. Content. I was actually losing hope in getting a location, and my mindset actually wavered for a bit. But you actually helped me out last minute. You're still, a, you're still a crook. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. That's true. Okay, no that's fine. See, see, positive. He's positive. So this is Gerald Wilson, and this is Shane Fraser, and we are out. Thank you very much, good people. So like so, I was saying, like, like, like we're talking about the script right now. What, what, what was your yeah, suggestion? I was saying like you know what, like action, like are you guys going to do the thing like you're, you're fighting and then you just leap over from like in the city and all of a sudden you like on the B side or like when you hit the phone from his hand, you kick it so hard it ended up over there by the beach and when you look the whole scene just changed like. Why so, Power Rangers? I mean like, that's that, that, the that best is, example. I mean that's example. I mean in Power Ranger they are there in the city fighting and all of a sudden, boom boom.
This discussion is getting nowhere. I am not doing power of your poses. No. And we're like, ah. And then you just see the phoenix or aura fall, fall up behind you. This big explosion. phoenix appears behind you. Explosion at the back as well. Yeah. The big the, falls with yeah. an explosion. And then you just see the you know, word of a phoenix. You know, just like an articuno silhouette. Hell no. <laughs> Hell to the no. With the obviously fake fire and everything. Absolutely not. <laughs> right? I mean, going and to work. And the old nowhere explosion. Yeah. Right? Like single yeah. Power Rangers. <laughs> Are you going to take up that role? No, it's Phoenix Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> to That's a spin-off, Jerry. Phoenix <laughs> Ranger. Who would be the Oracle? Uh, might that. as well take that. <laughs> Oh, Ozzy is the oracle. Yeah, yeah, the oracle. <laughs> the Ozzy that, is the oracle. Yes. In Phoenix Ranger. The one that knows stuff, what they're like. I mean, I just tell you something. Go we'll figure out the rest. I mean, I can't tell you everything. I was writing the, the corny dialogue. Right? <laughs> I'm not doing it. Like, I'm still not doing Power Rangers. I'm sorry. Phoenix Ranger. <laughs> exactly. He no. specified it. It's not Power Rangers. It's yeah, Phoenix it, Ranger. It's in no. the mix. It will be in the mix. And then he's he, what he's going to do is that he's going to summon the power of the Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going back to the and then you just like the Phoenix just imprint on his chest like the bird on his chest. Like, just like. No, no. Um, no, it's actually <laughs> Power Rangers as well. <laughs> I please, mean, please don't force me to use my firearm. Your what? My firearm. Just talk to the camera, Leo. What's the up? camera is your friend, Leo. Yes, it is. Ooh. What are we doing today, Leo? Yeah, so I'm going to acting for the very first time a day in my life. I always run from it when I school. Mm -hmm. What film are you acting on today? I uh, Road to Phoenix. And what will you be doing on Road to Phoenix? Today? Well, I'm the number three villain in. In the organization, because you know we the best. So what? I'm still in the top three. Yeah, awesome. yeah, 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 yeah. You're, we're all winners, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm Fike. I have a Japanese name, but I hope I can just play it off as all expected today. Hopefully, I can show some actual decent skill. All right. Yes. So this is villain number three. Yes. One, two, three. Still the greatest, nonetheless. Okay. <laughs> and right here we have the next one. Villain number two. What's up, guys? That's not true. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> to change and when I came up for, to come up I was like no fam I came close and I was like no fam then I'm not missing the dry shit is like no fam not gonna change in some I mean see another condom right here there you go so we have one condom there which is unused and we have a wrapper down there wait isn't that blue one a wrapper as well for a rough rider oh shit yeah that is full that is used people actually fucked up wrong here so people fucked in the shit <laughs> or fucking made, shit fucking shit <laughs> Wait, how do we know what condom brand so like how you know that's a rough rider? I think those are the free ones they get. The yeah the, the silver ones are the Yeah, yeah the silver ones are the But free that's one. a rough rider, I just saw the color and the shape and I knew it was rough rider. Says a lot, Joe. <laughs> I mean, a whole lot. I don't know where this is coming from. Uh -huh. um, I don't have sex a lot. Uh -huh. so sure. So you just call it them and just say no them different. So you just kinda go around and just try to study condom wrappers because it's some sort of odd hobby, right? Yes, it's this coming out. <laughs> cool. We'll work with that. Yeah, we'll yeah. work with that. I mean, everybody has their hobbies, right? You have people who collect toenail clippings. So, so like, yours is just knowing condom wrappers. I know, I know that shit. Okay. Do you I agree mean, with this, Leo? If you it's it's know, what he does. I can't buy condom wrappers from afar, you know. How's it that when you come in and catch your wife trying to throw a piece of paper, you can't identify a condom wrapper? Okay, so you you made a point out of something I didn't think you could. <laughs> So we're going to work with that. Yeah, right, you've just yeah. justified your reason for, you know, getting to know. I condom mean, if, and if you're planning to go in the side man business, you have to know your condom wrappers and know how to disguise them. This way, if you know you forget it, you can tell the the, the woman how she can hide it without the husband knowing that it exists. There we go. That's one like some personal experience. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 
Yeah. It beats hiding under the bed. Which it also sounds like. No, no. I, no. <laughs> first things first. No. Secondly, I have never actually gone over a female's house to have sex. Them always come to me. It, it, it's just, it's just one of them things. Okay. But why would you want the knowledge of knowing how to to ha hide such evidence, though? Listen to me. Yeah, I, I, when you, when you're in the side business, right? <laughs> you have to know how to do your work and not leave any marks you like no one's supposed to know that you were here <laughs> so if you're going you kiss the neck or you bite the neck you're supposed to do it and she get her pleasure and the pain but there is no teeth mark not even a hint of mosquito bite on the neck wow you know exactly so <laughs> ladies and gentlemen <laughs> you, you, it is it is all in the technique Ladies That's why we not be the side nigga. We do what? Borrow people, woman. Oh, no, 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 no. We prefer borrow. That's less work, brother. Less work. First things first, you don't borrow people, woman. Well, I've never actually had to go and say, hey, come here, you know, to borrow people, woman. Are no, people, no, no. woman, borrow me? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm picky. I'm picky. I'm of picky. Course. So when, when I borrow, I just see a female, oh, you have a man, I don't care. Just a one night. Me not take you forever. Me not want it permanent or last too long. So I'm gonna borrow for like a few hours, get what me I get, I'm going away. <laughs> like, no, you see, that's the like, thing, you know. Like, what's so hard? Like, I gave her I, back to her mind and her life. She you just, see, just... it's, a, it's a lot of energy to go out there. You see, the time that I could be used watching anime and playing games, when I go out there, I go look people, oh man. Like, that, that's just like. No, because I have to go out into the world and interact with certain persons. I don't know. But I go see a one female, like, oh. Oh no, I won't say I won't. I, I won't say I won't say I won't flirt, you know. But like, it's when you come on to the sex thing of sex, always gonna work. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me all remind you how we got here. We got here by talking about shit down there, and they use condom wrap around the shit, and talking about fucking shit, and we evolved to where we got a while ago. How did we get there? I don't know. It, it's the nature. <laughs> It's a shitting conversation. It's a very <laughs> shitty conversation, exactly, I agree.